as you can see, it's seeing connections. Um, and it's really about the human connections that we have with each other. Um, and what, what I mean by that is like how we rely on each other, how we support each other, how essentially how we are interlaced with each other's lives so seamlessly. Um, yeah, I mean, that's essentially what I was trying to get at. Um, and I was inspired by, in my sophomore year, I was listening to this, I believe, and I believe, and The Moth. Um, and I really liked um, how hopeful the message was behind this, I believe. Um, the philosophies, the stories that came with it, and the moth, I really liked the storytelling aspect um, and how, especially like the live audience and the, um, the atmosphere that came with it. Uh, I thought that was really special. Um, so I kind of had a thought, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a vineyard nation at that? So, it, especially because it would just be like personalized and um, kind of thinking like, oh, we have the vineyard current, the person of the week, wouldn't it be nice if there was like, oh, a philosophy of the week or that type of thing. Um, so then my junior year, Laurel Reddington from MBY came into uh, my English class and she did a little mini podcast project with us. And I had a lot of fun with that. And I kind of had an aha moment of, oh, I could do that. Um, and it was interesting. And I, at the same time, I also learned about three other things. Um, one, that uh, this, I believe, published a series of books. Two, that Lindsay Jacobs, last year, graduated last year, was publishing uh, this, we believe, also inspired by this, I believe. And three, that senior projects had to be distinctly different from previous ones, which that one I'm not entirely sure why I didn't just assume had to be there. Uh, maybe I was just hoping it didn't exist um, and I could just get away with it. But uh, um, so then I kind of, in lieu of that, I kind of had to just mull things over and I started thinking about relationships. Um, who was in my life when they entered my life, um, the effect that it had had on my life. Um, and I only realized this a couple weeks ago when Laurel was interviewing me for the Vineyard Current, which aired on Sunday. Um, and she asked me the question, how did you come up with the prompt? And it kind of just popped out of my mouth without me thinking about it, but trying to come up with who to ask for college recs and scholarship recs. But that also really contributed to what the prompt ended up being, which I thought was interesting. Um, <coughs> but so I ended up asking people to tell me about a deeply, someone who had had a deeply positive influence on their life. So I wrote up an invitation up here. Um, and it really helped me define further what I was actually looking for and what I was trying to find, find out. Um, and it was, I mean, like I said, it was really helpful to me. Um, so I wrote up, so I wrote this up and I handed out about Oh, I invited people who, um, I chose people who they had influenced me in a way, big or small, that had been meaningful to me. And I really wanted to choose people that not, I tried to balance it between people who I knew well and people that um, I had noticed from afar. I didn't want it to be only people that were really super close to me. Um, and I 
it's, I, it's, I tried to balance that with the invitations. I don't necessarily think it's balanced in the book just because people that know me better were more likely to say yes. Um, but that was important to me. Um, so I ended up sending out about 46, and I got 36 back. That's including myself. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, and so I knew that I wanted essays, but I wasn't really sure how to focus it. So that's very broad. Um, and the idea behind it is very broad. But I wasn't really sure how to focus it, and it kept shifting. And I was originally looking at, in terms of research, um, how morality is influenced by our, by our relationships, the development of morality is influenced by our relationships. And then that changed, and it changed again. And that just kept happening. Um, and then, so eventually, Ms. Hennigan, my mentor, she showed me a TED talk by Drew Dudley, who's an, uh, a uh, leadership educator, and it's a it's um, it's a pretty funny talk actually, and he, it's about how he argues that leadership should be looked at on the smaller scale instead of the bigger scale, and it should be about such like a scary, heavy title to be labeled as a leader. Um, so he argues that it should be looked at more in the small everyday moments and to be recognized for the smaller things. Um, and that was more what I was trying to get at. So I um, so I tried so I that kind of gave me a more of a focus. And I was like, okay, so I'll look at leadership. So then that gave me a focus, and I started to look into leadership. Um, and I found that I was reading a lot about John Maxwell, who's a leadership expert. But a lot of what I was reading was about leadership in the workplace, and that wasn't what I wanted. So I found that what I wanted really wasn't out there. Um, so I decided that I wanted to go out in to a community and interview people. So I went out into Vinny Hayden with a friend, and um, I decided to ask people um, this question and see what their responses were. Um, and I'm just going to play that. My boyfriend bought me flowers for no reason, and that was really nice. <laughs> well, this past weekend I was in Denver, and my brother FaceTimed me at like 4 o'clock in the morning, Denver time, where it was 6 o'clock in the morning, our time, just to say hi, which was really cute. So that made my day. They did my dinner dishes. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. He always does things for me, makes my tea every morning, and just to make sure that my life is good. And then one of my friends waited for me and she had in my car and she scolded me. Um, yesterday I came home, my boyfriend bought me flowers for no reason and that was really nice. <laughs> um, I mean, he just motivated me to be, um, you know, doing things and going out and going to work and stuff like that. So I guess it's kind of like a little token of appreciation saying like, hey, good job at doing life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go away for a week and a half, and I got two different friends to give me rides, both now and when I come back, which is a huge relief. Um, yeah, today my wife, she smiled when she woke up, and she was happy. A friend called me, invited me to lunch, and we had a wonderful lunch in Edgartown. Um, yes, my husband fixed me coffee in the morning, and he drove me to work, and he left me with a big smile saying, I'll see you soon. So I was in church yesterday, and 
in the church that I go to, they help call all the children up to the front row to kind of do a little children's lesson. And in the middle of it, my little four-year-old son left the lesson and ran back to where I was sitting and gave me a big kiss and said, I love you, Mommy, and then went back up and sat down. Um, so those are some of the responses I got. That's pretty representative of what they all were. Um, one of them, which was really sweet, it was one of the first ones, actually. Um, I asked them the question, and they said, uh, hearing about the senior project, and that was kind of, I had been nervous to do it, and that was kind of nice, like, boost. Um, so that was nice to hear. Um, so then doing that, and I started to get essays in pretty soon after doing this. And as they started coming in, I was started to keep track of them. And yes, that's a lot of yeses. Um, and I was keeping track. It's just a spreadsheet. And um, it didn't always look so filled. Um, <laughs> that was a very slow process. Um, but as they came in, it was very exciting, and um, as they were coming in, it was very, it was actually very touching for me because it was, I can't, I can't tell you how many brought me to tears just because it meant to me that they thought this had value too. And, um, yeah, that, that to me was amazing because, I mean, I had been, like, waiting for this to come to life and it was happening and, um, yeah, so that, it was, that was, I don't even know how to do this about, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, so the first one came in, and I was actually in Rockefeller Center in New York, and my mom texted me a picture. Um, and it was actually handwritten. And I remember the person had asked if they could handwrite it because they didn't feel comfortable typing. And I remember being so honored that they would like reveal that vulnerability. Um, just for them to share that um, was special and to be trusted with that. Uh, so when they all started coming in, I mean, everyone's busy, so it had a lot to do with like tracking down everyone. <laughs> and it was a lot of reminders and emails and trying to get titles and approvals and confirmations and clarifications and all of that. Um, uh, so yeah, that was a lot of, I don't know how to put that, but there was a lot of emails. Um, and I think one of my biggest regrets was that I didn't, at the beginning, I forgot to get everyone's email. See, like you see phone there. And like there's one blank, um, so that was my biggest regret. I didn't get emails for everyone, and that made it so much more difficult. Um, so that was uh, that is my biggest regret. Um, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I the whole time I was kicking myself for that. Um, and at the same time that. I was getting them in, so I was getting them in slowly, and I was, and I was getting some in, and I was getting responses, and I was, they were kind of like, this was, it was a good exercise, but, and but it was difficult, and I was, I, there was, there was doubt, like, what if this is too much? What if this is too big of a task? What if I'm not going to get enough responses? What if there won't be enough to? Publish this, and so um, there was all of that, and it was there was a so it was all exciting, and there was it was all of that, but it was also very 
stress inducing, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, so then it got down to April break, and I had kind of left all these things that I had forgotten about and kept putting off, and <laughs> it was entirely my fault. Um, but I had all these things left to do, so there's a cover idea over there. Um, and I had been working with another senior, Ava Thors, who was also doing a senior project, so she was equally as stressed out as I was. Um, and this I feel terrible about things, but I was, she was doing, uh, making a cover for me. And um, she was finalizing it, and I kind of, I was kind of hesitating, and it just didn't feel right. And um, so then I got back the Monday after a break, and I went to Michelle Quist. Um, with a new idea, and she tweaked it, and within four days I had a cover, so that was a huge relief. Um, and then over here on the right is this is me <coughs> experimenting with uh, the order of the essays just to see which one kind of felt right with the flow. Um, and there really wasn't any like formula to this, <laughs> so that was just a lot of rearranging and. Um, testing. Uh, so, yeah, I got down to April break and it, there was like, I don't know if you wouldn't think so, but to me, I didn't, I didn't, um, I hadn't thought about how much effort it would actually take to like copy and paste everything into a document. Um, and to get the spacing right and all of that. So that ended up taking many more hours than I had expected. Uh, and that was more than I needed. Uh, but uh, that, yeah. So then it finally all came together, as you can see up here. Um, and they were here, and that felt amazing to open the box and see them all there. Um, and so that reading them, it's hard not to notice a few themes, one of them being family. So a lot of people wrote about um, parents and grandparents. Um, there's a few other non-parents and grandparents, but those were definitely themes. Um, and it's, there's definitely like we write about memories we have of them, and they're always like fond ones, and, of course. Um, but it's kind of it's, um, like nostalgic writing, um, reminiscing. Um, it's kind of like looking through like an old photo album, reading the essays. Um, and then another one is. Uh, People that are in your life during challenging times or uh, defining moments, they're, they're the ones that like teach you things or um, give you advice or support you. Um, they definitely stick with you um, in your mind. Um, yeah, so that, oh, um, this, so this is what the cover ended up actually looking like um, at the back. And the, this is the proof that the printing company, like I sent the this and this, and then they put it together. Um, I mean, the front and the back, and they put it together. Um, and so then the last little bit was recording with Laurel, and um, that was two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Um, and I, because I had originally wanted, to, I had thought about doing, because I couldn't do with the whole Libby thing and having to do, be distinctly different, um, that whole conundrum. I, um, 
I had thought of considering doing something similar to the law. And um, I, but I was attached to the book idea. So I, and there wasn't enough time to really do the book and like a complete podcast thing. So I still wanted to record a few. Um, so then, about a week and a half ago, um, uh, Ms. Hennigan and Annie Olin, I don't know how many of you know her, but they both recorded themselves reading theirs, and um, Laura Reddington interviewed me, and then that was, that aired on Sunday as the main recurrent. Um, and then that was kind of like the you know, podcast on honor of that. Um, and so now I am going to play Miss Hengen's recording. And then uh, Miss Susan here is going to come up and read her um, essay. And then we'll do questions. My name is Kate Hennigan, and I am a freshman English teacher at Martha Senior Regional High School. This is called How Far a Little Candle Throws Its Beans. <clears throat> Ever since I can remember, I have loved creating stories. From the time I started typing up until about eighth grade, I recall spending much of my free time writing screenplays about poor families who travel to distant lands like Hawaii. <laughs> I also remember spending maybe too much time alone in my room creating random character biographies about the generic family photos used as placeholders in store-bought picture frames. And it's not hard to trace my dream of making movies back to my obsession with the family camcorder and directing my younger siblings in movies complete with soundtracks and special effects. It was all so much fun. By the time I got to high school, however, I had become increasingly involved in sports, and as I joined one school team after another, sports schedule started to run my life. It was my choice, of course, to sacrifice my afternoons and many evenings for practices, games, and traveling, all of which I loved, but doing so left little extra time to pursue my creative interests. It was hard to straddle the gap between sports and the arts in high school. This was mostly due to logistics. Participation in our school's theater program, for example, required as much of a commitment as did a varsity team, and it was impossible to simultaneously meet the expectations of both. So I chose sports, because sports came easily to me, and that's what all my friends were. Any attempt to break into theater would have required taking a giant leap out of my comfort zone. So as somewhat of a compromise, I elected to take our school's elements of theater course my junior year. Mrs. Virginia Byrne was my teacher in that course, and I can say with confidence that my time spent in her class that year pointed me back in the direction of everything I loved and reminded me of the magic I discovered as a kid. Her teaching resulted in learning and revelations that set me on journeys of discovery through story to which I remain wholeheartedly committed today. Spending time in Mrs. Burns' class was invigorating. She set the bar high and encouraged us endlessly. Her passion and enthusiasm for language and the theater was contagious. She made us believe we were actors when I only saw myself as one athlete in the class from the other side, the only one not involved in the larger theater program. She inspired and encouraged me to step out of that aforementioned comfort zone in order to take important risks, and when I did, she made me feel like I was just as capable as anyone else. Our readings and plays helped me find the beauty in language and further appreciate its complexity. During our class discussions, I felt like we were all discovering gold together for the first time. And when it came to thinking about the choices people make, acting deep into my sense of empathy. Reading about Sojourner Truth would have been at best interesting in history class, but embodying her spirit, mindset, and story through a role that required I act out her Ain't I a Woman speech brought history to life for me for the first time, too. And finally, as a result of my positive experience in that first class, I signed on for Mrs. Burns' demanding acting Shakespeare course the following year which ended up being the experience through which my initial impression of Shakespeare as an impenetrable, archaic language fell away. Shakespeare's plays became stories to which I could actually relate, full of language that I could actually have fun with. Who knew? I went on to study Shakespeare in college and graduate school, and I jumped on any opportunity to partake in a play production along the way. 
My time spent with Mrs. Byron was really only limited to class time. I never visited her room outside of class or in any of the years following my time in school. And she wasn't, for example, among the few teachers I invited to my high school graduation party. But in hindsight, it was her influence, her passion, at a time in my life when I could have made a handful of other decisions that reawakened and fostered in me the deep love of language and story that is the cornerstone of my life as I know it today. Also, I had so much help with this project, and without all of that help, it just wouldn't have come together. So, um, for everyone that wrote things, I mean, it's a book, but I, I mean, I didn't write everything that's in it. Um, and I just want to thank everybody that helped me to produce this, um, because I really couldn't have done it myself. So. Um, Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> um, just as a disclaimer, I wrote a totally different essay when Lucy had asked me to do this. And then uh, my daughter had a baby, and I ripped up the essay and wrote this. So I may cry. <laughs> um, but it's been, it was a great thought process, and I was really happy to be a part of it. Okay. Uh, so mine is called An Unexpected Influence. Right. <clears throat> For me, there could be more than one answer to the question you posed. My first thought would be my father. He was widowed at the age of 36 when my mother died very suddenly, leaving him with four children, ages 3 to 11, and no idea as to how to care for them. He did the best he could and taught me numerous lessons, the most important of which was never to think what if. He felt strongly that you dealt with what came you up your way and you never, you were never to wallow. Self-pity was useless. But now in March of 2017, I have a different outlook on who has been the greatest influence. On March 1st, 2017, at 3.05 p.m., our daughter, Carol, sorry, welcomed our, her first child, Claire Teresa White. She is the most perfect baby I have ever seen. I asked Lucy to put a picture in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I was seeing something. She is beautiful and calm and sweet and truly the light of my life. But now, but she is not the answer to this question. Carol is. Carol with her love and tenderness. Carol with her big heart and incredible intuition on how to care for her new daughter. Carol with her kindness towards her family, her need to be inclusive of us all, her crazy grandparents, sisters, uncles, aunts, as we crowd around Claire, jostling each other out of the way to get some time snuggling with her. To watch your daughter become a mother is incredibly powerful. It has been a month of joy and tears as I mourn my mother and watch my daughter transform into a mother right before our eyes. I am in awe of my daughter. She is graceful and appears at ease in her new role, so confident and calm and nothing like me when I brought her home from the hospital. My father's voice is in my head these days, don't ask what if. What if my own mother were with me along the way? What if my mother sorry, were here today to hold her beautiful granddaughter? I don't ask that question. Instead, I marvel at my strong, beautiful daughter, and I take a moment and quietly watch as she feeds Claire, cuddles and whispers, hello, my sweet lamb, as she smiles and calms her daughter with just a touch and a squeeze. The ease in which she has moved into this role is astonishing and truly a gift to be a part of. Carol has shown us grace, shown us calmness, and shown us pure joy, and for this I am forever grateful. How many books did you order? Uh, 200. Nice. <laughs> okay, so this is a big one. Um, so in looking at this, you're seeking connections. And I wanted to know, was, was this 
for you to understand people? Are you seeking connections with, with people? Or are you trying to put out something so that other people can understand the connections within, you know, everybody? So is this for somebody else to read and for them to get the connections of people? Or was this more of a, a study that you were interested in? Because I don't know, are you interested in people? Are you inter interested in interpersonal connections? Um, the the Everything that you've stated before, the values, the moods, the the, um, uh, the meaningful moments. What what was the main idea of this of this? And I know that you've gone through quite a process, and I think that that's uh, highly um, respected. You know, commands respect. Um, but what for me, I'm trying to figure out what the the main idea in seeking. <coughs> I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I mean, I definitely was interested in it for myself. Um, part of it was definitely, I mean, I wanted to see, I mean, I, like on the back it says, yeah, yeah, it does. It says right there, like, I wanted to be able to take a part of home with me because of right. this panic of senior year. And, um, and wanting to be able to, like, understand a little bit more of the island. Um, and, but I think also I wanted to be able to... I mean, I'm not... It's not like I thought this was going to make like, a huge difference, but... <laughs> um, I wanted to be able to maybe have like in the people that participated, I wanted to maybe have them get a little bit more of an understanding for themselves in um, the connections that they had. Um, so I think it's a little bit both. Do you, do you find that you are interested in people? Do you think oh, that it's okay. something that you'll, you'll go forward looking at and study? So um, I'm curious about your um, what you think was really uh, positive and what you didn't like about the process of doing the same project. And, um, clearly, you had to rely on others, so that that's different from some of the other projects that that, um, that I looked at. And so I'm just curious, from your perspective, did you like this process? If so, what did you like, and what were some of the hurdles that you faced? And, didn't like so much. Um, I mean, there are definitely a lot of hurdles just relating to the the book itself and the research. Um, the book it was primarily time. Um, there just wasn't enough of it, and some of that was my fault. Um, <laughs> I. Um, I think I definitely procrastinated, uh, and I couldn't manage my time better. Um, research, I I could have used a little bit more help with that. I think just because I really have never, um, I mean, no one really has ever done a real research paper ever, um, and like formulating a question. Um, that is really very difficult, um, and I think not, I mean, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I think that, I know I had a very hard time. If you were in charge of, if you were the faculty person in charge of your business, would you change anything about the process, or would you do you think that there was a, there would be a, a better way to do it, or it could be perfect way to think? Um, that I don't know, just because I'm not entirely sure how. Like I'm, I still don't know how how to do it, so <laughs> I, I I wouldn't know how to teach it either. So I don't. Mary. 
Um, what was your favorite part of like the entire thing? Reading the stories. James. Um, <clears throat> besides not getting the emails to the people you were asking, um, what was like the biggest thing you would have done different if you go back? <coughs> I mean, I think I don't know if I could do this differently just because of time and length of the book, but I mean, asking the people, I like thinking of the people to ask and asking more people just because, I mean, there are. I mean, if you were to think about it, who has influenced you in your life? There's so many people, and I mean, what do you think? There would be so many people you would want to ask. So, that's a very hard list to narrow down. Um, can, uh, did you edit any of the essays that people sent into you, or did you leave them like as they were? Um, I edited them. Um, but minimally, so grammar, punctuation, and rearranging words a little bit just to make it more clear. But that was about it. Um, I guess as a, I, I don't know, I, I can't speak for the other writers in this book, but I don't think, well maybe you do, but maybe you don't realize that what you did, you, you were seeing connections with, with others. But what you did with your project is you created a conduit for which the writers could understand themselves better. Because for me personally, to be prompted with such a question made me answer questions I had about myself. So what you did, I think you need to understand, is a lot greater than I think your initial focus. Because you created a collective of writers who now understand themselves better. So that's, I think, the gift you gave us. And you need to understand that, and that we're appreciative. At least I'm appreciative for that. And that's, yeah. that's huge. So it's pretty impressive. We'll see. Wow. Okay. I just definitely have to agree with what you just said as well. Also, me writing my story helped me to like uncover a little bit of like my past. So this uh, helped, me, it helped me think about different people that have influenced me because I, I did have several different ideas about who I could write about and then I chose someone who was pretty obscure for even for myself so I could just looking back at I want to agree with that and, and, and share that the connections continued on because the person I wrote about was a teacher I had in high school and I wanted to get some background information because it's been a really long time since I've been in high school and I forgot a lot of stuff. And I, I found his daughter on the internet, and we, <laughs> I stalked her, okay? And, um, and it was remarkable to talk to her, and she was so moved that her father was being remembered in this way, because he passed on quite a while ago, that uh, I sent her a copy of the essay, and she sent me a note back, with the, the email back, and the thing, the memo part said, moved to tears. And as it turns out, she lives in Virginia, but she comes here, of course, everybody comes here. Um, and to pull it even more forward, she's a, she's a equestrian coach at Washington, and she is going to connect with some of the people here who ride. Which is so. So what you put in motion had a ripple effect in my life, and I imagine that everybody who wrote it that there's some piece like Brian said that you couldn't have imagined when you asked us to do this, and I'm I'm delighted, just delighted in that. So a very awkward name, seeking connections, creating connections, could be your part two. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with everyone and what they said. I'm really proud of you for doing all this. And like, I know it was so much work seeing you stressed out in the library, but it, it is a really <laughs> great project. I'm really proud. So um, I'm curious to know um, what you learned about yourself, what, what insights about are, have you gained since um, clearly you prompted that for other people? What, have, what kinds of realizations or insights about your own life and your own development did you gain through this process and project? Um. I 
think. that I didn't necessarily think about. Um, and I didn't necessarily pay attention to. Um, Did you connect with parts of yourself that Thank you, Lucy. 